Dona. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise to in support of my amendment that would cut funding for the Student Financial Assistance Account by $9.25 billion. The Student Financial Assistance Account is being funded at $22 billion for FY24. This account provides funding for grants, loans, and other financial assistance to students who choose to pursue higher education, but the federal government's subsidization of higher education costs for individuals has actually created perverse incentives for higher education institutions to raise prices for all students and prospective students. This is a spiral and, and cycle that has been going on for decades. A 2017 study from the Federal Reserve found the average tuition increase associated with expansion of student loans is as much as 60 cents per dollar. Federal student loan subsidies don't help students with the cost of higher education. These subsidies actually result in increased costs for higher education, tuition, fees, and expenses. With the federal government bearing the brunt of student loans, colleges are guaranteed to get the funding they ask for at the expense of the American taxpayer. This is a cycle that only leads to higher spending each fiscal year. Cut, cutting funding for this program would claw back billions that could be diverted to lowering the national debt and the financial burden on the taxpayer. The federal government should not have a place in the monetary affairs of its private citizens. That is a matter for private banks, colleges, and students. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentle lady from Connecticut seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I claim the time in opposition. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. Make no mistake, this amendment will result in fewer students receiving Pell Grants and will cut the maximum Pell Grant award for 6.4 million students who use federal student aid to pay to get a college education. A cut of $9.25 billion will leave the program with a shortfall of $875 million in 2024. Under special scoring rules for the Pell Grant program passed by Congress nearly two decades ago, Congress cannot provide less funding than required under current estimates by the Congressional Budget Office. This cuts a Pell Grant to every single Pell recipient. If this amendment passes, the Pell Grant program would have less funding than required to sustain the current maximum award and existing eligibility parameters. Faced with this reality, House Republicans will have two choices. Cut the Pell Grant maximum award or kick students out of the Pell Grant program. At a time when students and families are struggling to cover rising college costs. It was already unconscionable that House Republicans would eliminate federal work study for 660,000 students and eliminate the supplemental education opportunity grants for another 1.7 million students nationwide. It was already cruel when House Republicans offered no relief to rising college costs by freezing the maximum Pell Grant for the first time in 12 years. But if this amendment passes, House Republicans will go one step further by cutting the maximum Pell Grant or kicking students out of the program. This is truly a new low. Does anyone in this chamber remember Senator Claiborne Pell? I remember him. Claiborne Pell was from Rhode Island to the manor born, affluent, but he had a vision. He understood that the sons and daughters of working men and women, of middle class families, of vulnerable families, had a right to an education just as every rich person in this country does. And therefore, he created this program, the Pell Grant Program. If my colleagues on the other side uh, they passed this amendment, then in fact, they are on that road that I have said over and over and over again is eliminating public education in the United States of America, eliminating opportunity for people to succeed in this country. Why would you want a legacy or a legend that follows you with that kind of effort? The United States is a land of opportunity. It should be, particularly where it comes to education for our children. It is the way to the future. I urge my colleagues to vote no on this misguided amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. 
The gentleman from Arizona is recognized. As, thank you. As it stands today, Americans owe over $1.7 trillion in student loan debt, more than 5% of the nation's total $33 trillion debt. The annual cost of attendance for student living on campus at a public four-year state in institution is 26 grand or over $104,000 for a four-year degree. Out-of-state students pay 27 grand or over 108,000. Private nonprofit university students pay 55 grand or more than $225,000. You know what's new low? You know what's cruel? You know what's unconscionable? It's sending kids out with worthless degrees, with debt that they can never sustain. It's a new low to oppose something like this because you know what's driven this? It is the exponential growth of children and kids who are coming up who cannot afford education because your grants, your continued giving of taxpayer funding to the universities has actually increased the number of people who have to get assistance. Why? because tuition has spiked. It's growing multiples of the inflation rate. That's what's cruel. That's what's unconscionable. I, I reserve. Members are reminded to direct their remarks to the chair. The gentleman reserves. I recognize the gentlelady from Connecticut. Mr. Chair, I yield the balance of my time to the gentleman from Virginia, the distinguished ranking member of the Education and Workforce Committee, Mr. Scott. The gentleman recognizes. Thank, thank you. I, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now rise in opposition to the amendment and the underlying bill. The House Republicans' partisan bill is an attack on students, workers, and families. For 2024, the bill would cut close to $64 billion, roughly 28% from the Department of Labor, Health, and Human Services, Education, and Related Agencies. For the last time it was this low was in 2008. Inequity in America's Education system persists. Significant funding disparities among neighboring schools continue to deprive students of equal access to quality education, and this bill cuts Title I uh, but significantly. Uh, the, for, moreover, the bill cuts other programs, like completely eliminating the federal work study that allows students to work their way through college, the te teacher quality pro uh, partnership, the Job Corps completely eliminated, there are essential programs that workers in our districts rely on, and the House Republicans, if this becomes law, those programs would be eliminated, and this amendment would, reduce, would cut uh, federal student aid, uh, most, more, making it more likely that they would have to take out student loans. The underlying bill is bad enough. It's the first time in over a decade that the Pell Grant wouldn't increase. And so the, also in our nation is facing a disturbing child labor law violations, and House Republicans are slashing the OSHA, OSHA budget. And despite actively negotiating bipartisan reauthorization of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, we're proposing cuts in adult and, job, adult and youth job training programs. Finally, the bill is an insult to families. It cuts Head Start programs so drastically. If this bill were to come law, 50,000 children would lose access to, to child care. Mr. Speaker, I would ask that we oppose the amendment and the underlying bill, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you. What, what's driving the increased cost of tuition? Well, most of that is because of the bureau, bureaucratization of academia. That drives costs higher every year. Let's go back to that 2017 study from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The average tuition increase is associated with expansion of student loans is 60 cents for every dollar. So when your tuition's going up a buck, 60 cents of it is because of expansion of student loan programs. The Biden administration's efforts to eliminate student loan debt is wrong. Wrong because they force everyday Americans to pay for the student loans taken out by others and wrong because they double down on a failed public policy that incentivizes price increases. You incentivize tuition to go up. Why, why would a university ever reduce its tuition or its costs? They know that they've got the federal government to backstop every student who wants to go in. The way to curb the rise in both college tuition and student debt is to get the federal government out of the student loan business. 
The result will bring about more fiscally responsible citizens and a more fiscally responsible federal government, and this would make the loan market more responsible and cause colleges to rein in their costs, reduce tuition, fewer students would need uh, Pell Grants or, or private aid. Private lending would also limit taxpayers' exposure to billions of dollars in student loan defaults. Did I say billions? I meant to say trillions, because that's where we sit. Now I want to respond. How much time we got left? Ah, a little bit of time left uh, to the cynical uh, statement by the previous speaker who was talking about aid to Israel. We passed aid to Israel by a 226 to 196 vote. How did that happen? 196 of my friends across the aisle did not want to provide aid to Israel at that circumstance. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I urge people to adopt this amendment. I yield back. The gentleman yields back.